Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here. Today we're taking a look at a little card game in which you are diving into the ocean to bring up treasures. This is Pearls. Pearls is a simple and straightforward little card game. It plays two to six players, and in it you are going to be drafting cards into your hand from the table, and then playing sets of cards down to score them in a very straightforward manner. Again, uh, the game is quite short as well, and uh, it is one in which you have to watch out when the uh, correct timing is for you to draw cards and when you should play sets instead, because you have a very strict hand limit and it's something you need to keep an eye out. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at how the game works. We'll come on back after that. I'll tell you what I think of it. To set up the game, we are going to uh, first set up this deck of cards, depending on the number of players. So if we're playing with uh, four, five, or six, we're leaving them all in. You are going to shuffle up and give everybody a hand of six. Then we're going to flip over six cards from the deck. And we'll organize these necklaces up here, from the lowest value to the highest. And you're ready to begin. On your turn, you are going to do one of two things. You are going to either collect cards from the table, or you are going to play cards into your score pile. You're gonna reveal some, score them, put them in your score pile. You have a hand limit of 10 cards in the game, and when you choose to take cards, let's say that's gonna be my first turn, you must take all the ones of the same color if you choose to take that color. So if I want to, I can take just this single card, and then we replenish it, and that's the end of my turn. Or if I want to take this one, well, I have to take this one as well. And so I have to take all of those, and then we replenish both of them. If you cannot take a color because it would take you over 10 cards in your hand, then you may not do so. But again, you can always choose to score. So if my first turn might be to uh, take this five, for example. Put it in my hand, reveal a new card, and it's the next player's turn. On their turn, they might take both of these, and then we reveal these. And it goes to the next player, who might take the, the, the red ones here. And then we reveal these, Let's say it comes back around to me on my turn, then I might uh, choose to score some cards. Or I could choose to take these two. Now these are worth zero points, but they can be played to the table with any other cards. And the reason that's important is because as you play sets of cards that are high enough, you are also going to get these necklaces, which are worth victory points as listed on them. The size of the group equals the number of the points you're going to get. So for example, let's say on my turn I take these two, and then when it comes back around to me, I am going to score a group. I'm gonna play these here, the blue ones. So I play one, two of them, and then three of these. That's only worth four victory points to me, but it is a group of five, so I take one of these as well. And that's all in my score pile. That turn I don't draw, I just play into my score pile. And this continues going around the table until either all of the necklaces have been taken or the deck has been exhausted. At that point, everyone gets one more turn just to play cards. So I might, you know, play that. Let's say it's a final turn. And then you are going to score these points. Every card is worth whatever it says, but you subtract from your score pile anything you are still holding. So I would lose four points, uh, and this is everything I make. Figure out what your score is. Whoever has the highest score in the game is going to be the winner. All of the cards also list on them how many copies of that you are likely to find. And again, the zeros help you for bigger sets, but they're worth nothing. They also don't penalize you in your hand if you are still holding them. That's pretty much it. Very simple, straightforward card game of managing your hand, because you have to be careful. Sometimes you have a great flip out there, but you don't have the room in your hand to play them. So you have to, you know, balance between when to draw, when to play, and do you go for these, or do you just go for the high-numbered cards, of which there are not too many. For example, this five victory point card, there's only four copies of this in the game. So that's it. Let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. All right, so there it is, that is Pearls. Uh, if you are familiar with the game Jaipur, which is a two-player card game, then you're going to spot a lot of similarities here. It was the very first thing I thought of when I played this. And this feels like that game. The difference is being you play a single quote-unquote round in this, as opposed to in that game you play multiples. And of course, this goes all the way up to six. 
all the way down to two players still. Uh, and I was impressed. It's got a you know very bright, pretty look, and I was just I thought it made for a really neat filler. So overall, I do like this. But we're gonna go ahead and break it down a little more. Uh, I have a couple of things that I think aren't quite uh, as fantastic as the rest of the game. Again, looking at it as a filler card game, this is not revolutionary, but it is a good game. Those two things that I think are just okay: the theme, uh, the uh, diving for pearls here, really could have been anything. It's not offensive, it does not get in the way, but it's also not particularly captivating to me. And then the other thing is replayability. It re the game really does feel about the same every time you play. There's a couple of different things you can go for, but it's largely the, the same thing, you know. Uh, it does scale well, thankfully, all the way up to six and all the way down to two, so I like that. It gets it gets a thumbs up for that, but the replayability is sort of okay. Everything else I do enjoy, the aesthetics. The cards have a good quality. Everything has a real clean look. Numbers are easy to spot. The artwork is pleasant and attractive and does not get in the way, which is uh, a plus for me. Game length. Super quick, like an incredibly quick game. To the point that I've yet to sit down to play this game and played it a single time. I was just talking about how in Jaipur you have to play multiple rounds. In this one, you don't have to, but we kind of end up doing that anyway because it is so, uh, just so fast. The turns come around so quickly, even in a game with six, you are going to get to that end game quickly you are going to be doing interesting fun exciting turns uh right near the beginning of the game you know playing these big groups grabbing one of those large uh, necklaces so i like the the game length in this the rounds and and just the length of the whole thing it's a filler there's no question about it and one of the uh the amount of choices of turns let's call it to game length ratio is excellent ease of play very easy game to play, as you saw in the overview, uh, and you can explain this in just a couple of minutes, and you're off to the races playing. And then lastly, tactics and strategy. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, luck in it. Uh, it's a card game, of course, but there is also that idea of pushing your luck, right? How many cards do you take from the center and allow the next player to see a whole new slew of cards? So if you're, if you're taking from the six cards, four, they're all red, so you take them all, the next player does get to see quite a few cards you did not have access to. And that kind of plays into it. Of course, you now have a bunch of red cards, so you're going to be able to play those and get a big set. But when do you do it in the game or late in the game is going to, uh, you know, you're going to be maybe choosing to take different sets if you're getting close to the end game because you have to be careful how quickly you run out of the deck, but also what you make available to everyone else. So there are some interesting ideas in, at play here. Still, they are light. I enjoyed it though. I, I thought it was a, a really um, neat concept and ultimately it just, I, the way I think of it is the game is simple but effective. It is effective at what it tries to do. It is a filler and it does that well. It plays a, a large group of people all the way down to just two and it does those things well all along you know the, the entire spectrum of that. It is attractive, so it's easy to bring to the table. It has good quality cards, so it's going to sustain uh, a lot of play if you so choose to do that. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily play this a lot back-to-back, -back, as in, like, you know, play today and again play tomorrow and again play the next day, but we do play multiple games when I sit down to play it, so there is that. So I like it. I, I was impressed by it. In fact, this is a game that I think is going to jettison Jaipur from my collection because it feels similar, yet I can bring this out with two, or if somebody else shows up, I can still play the same thing. So, Pearls gets a thumbs up from me. I was impressed with this little card game. This is going to get a seal of approval. Uh, I would certainly recommend it if you are looking for a uh, filler card game that doesn't necessarily do anything new, but what it does do, it does cleanly, elegantly, and with a very simple rules overhead explanation. So there you go again, seal of approval from me for Pearls. I'll see you next time. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks for checking this out. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.